Greetings, welcome to another video. In the last video we had a capacitor like this that we would charge to say 10 volts and then put a, a conducting diode here to a coil of wire, discharge it here, and we saw something rather curious that when you discharge this cap into here the two didn't equalize. So in other words, if this cap is at 10 volts and this cap is at zero, this cap is one one hundredth the size of this one, then they should both equalize at 9.9, .9, right around 9.9 .9 volts. But that's not what happens. With the diode and the coil in, this one goes up to like 17 and this one goes down to like 9.84, 9.83, right around there. And it's curious that discharge a cap to another cap and the end state, they don't equalize. And that's because of the diode and the coil. And my explanation for that was that you have a resonant tank. And so this thing wants to go negative, but it can't go negative. But what it can do is it can discharge nearly twice as much charge as it normally would and hence bump this thing up to um, to 18 19 volts something like that so in a moment we'll build a little circuit here to discharge this into this without the diode but through a coil and use the arduino to allow us to control the timing here and see if we can see the same effect before even that i'll just talk a tiny bit of philosophy at you for a minute and it is interesting to contemplate um, if you take a cap like this, say this is at 10 this is at zero now you discharge them they both equalize 9.9 .9, and you just discharged it by connecting a wire to here from here to here now what if you put a 1k ohm resistor and discharge it through the 1k ohm resistor what does this equalize and this equalize to they both equalize to 9.9, .9. just takes a fraction of a second longer. What if you put a 1 mega ohm resistor in there? They both equalize to 9.9, .9, although it might take it like five minutes for the two caps to equalize. And there are a couple interesting points to consider there. So the first one is let's just go back to the wire. You boom, boom with the wire, and you now the caps are, are fine. What if your resistor? is an incandescent light bulb which has a small resistance. You connect it, they both equalize to 9.9 .9, but you get a little flash of light when the two equalize. So what I'm saying there is that resistance allows you to do work. So it's oftentimes the electrons bumping into stuff that allows you to do something useful. However, the whether you did something useful did work the end state at 9.9 .9 is unchanged whether you connect it with a wire whether you connect it with a, a light bulb a hundred ohm resistor that gets hot or a one mega ohm resistor and you wait 10 minutes for the two to equalize the end state is always the same back to 9.9 .9 volts well, it's 9.9009 because it's it's 100, 100 divided by 101. Um, now, a second corollary there is because adding resistance when you discharge one cap into another doesn't lead to the two ending at a different voltage than if the resistance wasn't there, then by definition, resistance doesn't lead to losses of charge or energy. So I, I find a lot of engineers <laughs> on the internet don't seem to get that. There are no resistive losses of energy. And just put a put a resistor there and see what the end state is. Move, remove the resistor, see what the end state is. There are no resistive losses of energy. What there are, and a number of engineers also get this, are resistive losses of power and power is how quickly these two will equilibrate. So I've had my little soapbox rant. And now let's go ahead and 
set it up where these two don't equilibrate, which you know isn't that isn't that kind of a humdinger. And I demonstrated that with the uh, with the diode, and now we'll demonstrate with the timing. And that I haven't I haven't set this circuit up yet, so it's all you know they're questions that I need answers to. But the um, one of the first questions is, if it's a resonant tank circuit, what's the resonant frequency? Is the resonant frequency going to be controlled by this cap, or this cap, or a combination of the two? In other words, if it's this cap, it'll be um, square. It'll be ten times as slow, square root of one hundred times as slow than if it's this cap. And we'll be able to see that on an oscilloscope, or also just put it into a spreadsheet. I, I'm guessing that it's the resonant frequency is a product of this cap, and this is viewed basically as a constant DC power source. But I don't know. And you know, if I happen to be correct, that the reason we see the voltage transformation with the diode is because of the tank circuit then we should be able to see this thing go up to 17 and then go back to like discharging way below 9 to like 3 and and then oscillating back and forth so I'm gonna be curious if I can see that as well okay so here is our little test bed and the first thing we have is when this switch goes high it triggers this opto isolated solid state relay and now power can flow from the positive bus line across the switch out to here. So when we put a cap there, then when that switch goes, this cap charges from the bus lines. The negative is just connected all the time. Now, uh, you know, technically maybe I should put another switch for the negative, but I don't think it's going to make a difference. I think we can get away with it. It might be famous last words, but uh, I think it'll be fine. Now you have this switch. When this switch goes positive, it makes a connection between here and there, and the negative of your cap goes out to here. So if we put our second cap in there, when this switch goes, this cap discharges across that switch into this cap. Now when we run this, that yellow line will become our coil, our inductor. And then we have a third switch here, which just shorts this cap because we might want to change things and you don't want to, every time you're changing the timing or something, have to go back by hand and discharge this. So once we've done what we want to, then at the end of it, we clean everything up by discharging this cap. And we start over charging this one up to full, up to isolating it. So it's just a cap there again. It's not entirely up to isolate, but it'll be fine. And then uh, discharging it. So let's first just see that that works, and then we'll put in an inductor. And see the inductor doesn't appear to do anything by itself. Then we'll repeat what we did last time with the diode, and then we'll show how with the timing we can do the same thing that we did with the diode in the last video, tapping it out by hand in the last video. So here I just threw together some code for that. So just as I was pointing out on the breadboard there, pin five goes high. First we're gonna run it slow and then we're gonna we're gonna have fun with the with the resonant frequency. So pin five goes high, that charges the big cap, that shuts down, then um, pin eight goes high, we discharge into the other cap, that shuts down, and then we um, discharge the other cap so that we can start over. So Okay, so we have the code compiled. You know, it's nice when you first put something like this to, you know, no need to go to 30 volts. You're much less likely to have a kaboom or a poof kind of thing. But what we see is it's doing exactly what we want. This cap is charging up, and then it's discharging into here. And then once that's done, we short it out so we can start over again. All right, so next thing, we'll, we'll bring it up to 10 volts, and we'll replace that yellow line with a big coil. So now we've gone up to 10 volts, and we put, we're discharging it across a coil, and we see it goes 
to about 9.89 is where the two equalize. I know that says 10.2, but when I put the meter on here, this is right at 10. And so they both equalize at 9.9, .9, which you would expect. And we're not seeing any of that transformation of voltage uh, like before, even though we have the coil in place. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just add the diode in and we'll see if we get the transformation of voltage now that we have everything set up with the Arduino and the breadboard. But um, I submit to you, Commander Ben Finney is not dead. Sorry. I, I submit to you that even though this is only registering 9.9, .9, it's just all happening so fast that we're not seeing this cap actually is going up to 17 and then it's bouncing low and then it's bouncing high. It's, it's ringing and it's just it has enough time then to stabilize at an equalized voltage. So if I'm correct, then after we do it with the diode, we should be able to do it with timing. So let's first just do it with the diode and then see if we can do it with timing. So now we put a conducting diode in series with the coil as this cap discharges through the conducting diode and the coil into here. And so what do we see? We see this going up to 17.2 volts. And let's put it on here. We should be able to see this go from 10 instead of to 9.9 .9 down to about 9.8. Okay, I think this is kind of cool. So there it charges up to 9.99. .9. I didn't get exactly 10. And it discharges to 9.82. Now again, this cap is 1 one hundredth the size of that. So when the two are connected in parallel, the voltage should be 100 divided by 101 times 10, which turns out to be 9.9009, .9 something like that. But instead it's going down to 9.82. That's the extra charge that it shot out here, shooting this up to 17.2, and it's stuck there because of the diode. Darn one-way switch, you can't, can't get back. So now the last, uh, the next thing to do is to try to do the same thing without the diode, just using the timing. So far we haven't done anything different than when we were just tapping things out by hand in the last video. But now with the more precise control of the switching that we have with the Arduino, we can try and see um, if we can do the same thing using the resonant frequency. Question is, what is the resonant frequency of this, this beast? And if I had to guess, it's going to be this capacitance and this inductance. Although maybe it's this capacitance and this inductance, or maybe it's something different. But I'm guessing it's that. And so let's put that in a spreadsheet and see what the number would be and see if we can do the same thing. So the inductance of this big coil is right around 91.2, 91.3, we'll call it 91.2 millihenries. And so the resonant frequency, if it's controlled by this 10UF, and this is viewed essentially as a, a constant DC power supply, which I don't know, that's part of the reason I'm doing this, would be 166, 167 hertz. The time from wave crest to wave crest would be six milliseconds and three milliseconds or 3000 microseconds is where it would go most negative. So in other words, even without the diode, if we just shut this thing down after 3,000 microseconds, we should see 17, a bit over 17 volts in here. I don't know if that's going to happen, though. Okay, so our code remains almost exactly the same. We'll charge it for a second, shut that switch down. The only difference is when we turn pin 8 high to discharge this cap through this coil, we're only going to do that for 3,000 microseconds, which is the time that we came up with from the spreadsheet for where this would go most negative. And again, you know, there's no diode in there anymore. It's just a cap discharging through a coil. So if we turn the power on, what do we see? 18.3 volts. That's kind of neat. And you notice it's higher than the 17.5 or whatever because we got rid of the voltage drop across the diode. 
just going to wrap this up. Let's put this, um, instead of the meter there, let's replace that with the oscilloscope and then we'll see if we can see this thing ringing. Okay, so here is what we have here. It's just where, okay, the cap goes up to 18 volts. It's actually saying like 19 on here. And then it, and then we discharge it. So if we take this delay of 3,000 microseconds and, 3, 000, yeah, 3,000 microseconds, and let's add another 30 milliseconds actually let's make it 60 milliseconds and then compile it and that's what we see let's see if I can freeze it yep so there is this cap oscillating now what's really interesting to me so we discharged the 10 volt it went up to 18 volts and then that 18 volts went back to about zero maybe it went back to about one volt and then it kept ringing that way so you could kind of think of ways you might try to to um, take advantage of that but that that might be well, maybe we save the philosophy for for another time. But that's um, that's what I thought was going on, and it was fun to to document it with the um, the oscilloscope. So I may do one more along these lines, which is just if you do this out to here, and then you pull off at the same time the induction into a second cap with the backwards diode here what's going to happen and I'm fairly certain that the induction will get split in two and so this instead of going to 19 will go to like 14 and a half and it'll be a, a not good spike out to your other cap of like 4.5 but it's, it, it, uh, it's probably worth looking at any of that it's always nice to see a plan come together so when you discharge a cap across a coil into another cap it's not as straightforward as you might think that's what's actually going on. The voltage goes way high, nearly double your input voltage, and it goes back to zero, and all that current rushes back into the cap that just discharged, and then it goes boom, 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 until finally they would both equalize at, you know, as we were saying, like 9.9. .9. So thanks for coming along, and I um, uh, hope people might have had some fun with my, my silly little experiment today. Uh, talk to you later. Take care. Bye.